All right, joining in on the conversation today is one of my number one favorite humans, Matt Gordon, the <laughs> the authority muse wow. at the uh, yeah man. You are one of my favorite humans ever. So I've been really excited to talk to you. And plus, your voice is so velvety, like in my ear. It's just so nice. So. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, so Matt's joining us. He's from the Authority Muse at the Educated Authority. Uh, you can find him at educatedauthority.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn. But you know, Matt Gordon is the Authority Muse at the Educated Authority, part historian, part psychologist, and part marketer. Matt is a cult kingmaker in all the right ways. <laughs> Through the in-depth study of dozens of influential leaders, as well as historical marketing and propaganda over hundreds of years, Matt has adapted the best of those strategies to enable contemporary thought leaders to change the world. I love it, Matt. Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. You know, uh, somebody the other day called me a credibility hacker, and Ooh. I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, Ooh. so I, I may have to add that into the bio somewhere. Yeah, I'm actually going to write that down on my notes because that's amazing. And I'm going to put all of that in the description. By the way, kids, for you out there listening, you will be able to find all of Matt's links in the description. So um, uh, make sure to go and check him out there. But but Matt, thank you so much for coming on here. Credibility hacker and uh, cult kingmaker. Dude, what brought oh, you to this point? All these scary terms, right? Well, what <laughs> brought me to this point was actually kind of a, a medical scare back in 2018, mm. where I decided that not enough good had happened in the world as a result of me being in it, right? Mm. So what do I do about that? And, and it took me a little while to come up with the answer. But the thing is, is that I needed a 100-year goal. Wow. So wow. what that means is if you think about having a goal that is still going to be relevant a hundred years from now because I plan on being dead a hundred years from now, right? Okay, like that's, just, that's just the way it's going to go. Let's you know, if you had any like cryogenics so, working in the background, I mean, you are an entrepreneur after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So maybe they'll just freeze my head, right? Oh, anyway. I would love that. <laughs> so uh, it, it's it's all about the the extreme long range goal of doing something good and positive in the world hmm. um, that's going to outlive you. And that became a really big deal to me. And there are plenty of people who have done that and way more people that have not. Hmm. And some people haven't done it yet and they like the idea and they want to. And so hmm. that's who I'm helping. Wow. Wow. So you're, so this, this rallying cry. Yeah. This hundred year goal. That's amazing. And that is the, um, I mean, that's the quintessential, maybe even description of an entrepreneur, right? We want to leave the world better than when we, we found it. I mean, it's like, it's like that fire, that passion of, of why we're doing what we're doing. So, so how, so you've incorporated that goal into a business. So tell me what you're doing now with the educated authority. Well, what, what I do is work with thought leaders and up and coming thought leaders who are trying to make the world a better place. They've got something to teach, something to say, something to sell, and I'm helping them get that out there and build that uh, relationship with their audience, build the audience, first of all, just like have one, right? Like that. Because you are a marketer. Step one. Yeah. And and then uh, build that relationship and, and uh, start making a difference. And the way that we keep track of that difference uh, in a lot of ways is average value per customer. Mm. All right. So uh, if someone bought your book, somebody bought your course, somebody subscribed to your your Patreon or your podcast or, or whatever, they're giving you money. Well, how much are they giving you over the, their lifetime? And mm. so what do we do? We, we want to extend that lifetime as long as we can and and then help them as much as we can. And we keep score by how much money they pay you. What what value are they exchanging mm -hmm. uh, to get the transformation that you're offering? I love that. And what was that? Average what? Average value per customer. Average ABC. value. Yeah. Is that a term? Did you make that up? Oh, no. That's a pretty standard marketing number that more business owners should know. And, yeah. and often they don't. Yeah. Know? 
Yeah, right. And so you help your clients realize that. Now, let's pull back the layers a little bit. So for anybody listening that may not know what a thought leader is, can you describe or give a different definition of a thought leader? Sure. Well, you know, it it gets into these layers of celebrity and kind of authority and then a thought leader. So if you're a thought leader, you have a school of thought. So if we're talking about like content marketing, someone's going to say, well, Heather Holloway says... X, Y, Z, you should do this. And people that have heard you and people that follow you, they say, oh yeah, that is, that is her stuff. That is what she says. So having a school of thought Mm. is one of the two or three big differences between someone who is just smart in public and someone who is a smart leader. Another one would be that you actually have followers. You can't lead somebody that (laughs) doesn't exist, right? Right, right. So, So that seems to be part of it too. Yeah. Uh, so those are, are probably the the two biggies right there. Uh, and then the third is something that goes into being a thought leader, and that is actually having an emotional bond with the audience. And that's, mm. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into thought leader mistakes at some point. And that's maybe the biggest one right there is, uh, you know, trying to be somebody's Google. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Okay. Trying to be somebody's Google. Okay, perfect. We're going to get back to that because we're definitely going to look at the mistakes. But let's say, okay, so so as a thought leader, can I be anybody and be a thought leader? Or do I need to be an author? Do I need to be, you know, like can Heather Holloway do it with a social media marketing agency? How can we be thought leaders? Well, it kind of, you know, if, if you look at the history, as I am obviously prone mm-hmm. to do, you look at like a Napoleon Hill, a, a Dale Carnegie, people of that nature from say a hundred years ago or almost a hundred years ago. Um, and, and they all were trying to do their thing and were not doing great. And then they wrote the book, like think and grow rich. Right. Which I just read. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and then you spend the next 20 years promoting that book or that thing. And that's kind of what you become known for. And that's what your audience coalesces around. Well, things have changed. So that's still a way to do it, but you can do it with a blog. You look at someone like James Clear, who wrote uh, Atomic Habits. This Mm. is a guy that was blogging and and being successful with that. And he had his themes. He had the things that he talked about and his ideas. And then finally, out of all of that writing, he was able to synthesize it and put it together in an organized way. And here comes the book which has sold, gee, I, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of copies. Yeah, yeah. So and you can do it either yep. way. And and that's that's relatively new. Yeah, right. Either way. So so, But it sounds to me like the point is you got to document your thoughts. Yeah. So if you're going to do the book first, uh, you still need some sort of episodic communication. You need something where you're building that relationship with your audience. Uh, you know, and that's why I'm kind of more in favor of the second way, the blog first, the podcast first, mm-hmm. the, the you know, the content first before that's, the book. Yeah, that's content we're consuming right now, right? Yeah. Right. Because then you build that audience so that when you say, Hey, my book's ready. Like hmm. they run out and buy it because they've been waiting for it. They've been dying yeah. for it. Yeah. So that to me seems like the best way to go about it. Uh, because if you just drop your book into kind of the nothingness, it becomes this, you know, tree, you know, falling in the forest with no one to hear it. Right. Yeah, Whenever that's right. Book sells. Um, you, you know, if you include self-published books and most of them are these days, the average book sells somewhere around 300 copies, not encouraging news, right? Well, yeah, right. Exactly. Like, where, where do I get the number one New York best times, New York best time seller or whatever it's called? Right, right. Well, and, and then and then the news gets worse from there about books. And books are great. Like, write a book. It's it's wonderful. But realize what you're dealing with. Realize the environment you're entering into. Because out of those, say, 300 people that buy your book... Not everybody's even going to read it. Some of them mm. are just going to put it on the bookshelf and and <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's going to sit there and collect dust. Out of people that start reading it, uh, less than 10% in nonfiction uh, books commonly have completion rates of less than 10%. 
Oh my gosh. So when you when you start chunking those numbers down, um you might as well have stood on the street corner and, <laughs> and just like yelled out at cars passing by. Yeah. Well, that's one way to do it. But you know what I love hearing this is that, you know, if you're sitting there thinking like that's the only way or some other expert out there told me that I had to write a book, leave yourself off the hook. Leave yourself off the hook. You know, you can you can get out there and 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 do your thought leadership, like you said. You can choose your own adventure. How do you most like to communicate? So for me, I was doing a lot of video production, at, scripted video production, like reading off of a teleprompter and trying to do that weekly. I got to tell you, Matt, that's a heavy lift. And so I thought to myself, okay, I need to get my message out there. How do I like to do it? And I like to have conversations. So ta-da, here's practical talk. So I guess it's like. What do you most align with? Do you want to do pre-produced like videos that you do? Do you want to write a blog? Do you want to just have a podcast? Do you want to have a vlog, right? Any one of those actions will get you closer to that thought leadership. Absolutely. You know, and, and the other thing about it is as you get better at it, you want to take that unit of creative output, we'll call it, right? And redistribute that you know, so that articles become podcast episodes, mm. so that podcast episodes become articles, so that articles become books, so that books become fuller-fledged information products. Those become seminars. That seminar gets repackaged as what? Another product for, you know, pre-recorded, you know, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So uh, that is part of it, but don't feel the pressure of having to do it all today. <laughs> right. As I do, I'm like, it's got to be all done. But, you know, baby steps, uh, you know, taking that one bite at a time. So, so, you know, you said you're a history buff. So you do a lot. You do a lot of reading. So you, you surpass the, the 10% of people that finish books. And by the way, I do too. And I just started Atomic Habits. So fun fact, you just brought up <laughs> Think and Grow Rich and Atomic Habits. So I feel pretty good about my, about my future. Um, there you go. But, yeah. So history. So what can history, what can we learn from history? What can history teach us to become, you know, a thought leader? Uh, immediately, Lincoln comes to mind. Go ahead. Well, I have two answers. Number one is nothing if you learn it the way they teach it in high school. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Go <laughs> <You know>? on. <laughs> well, forget the names and dates and the facts. I mean, that's that's more like trivia night questions. Do you mm. have trivia nights in your area? I, oh, yeah. I, I was a trivia host. Kind of a, oh, yeah, that's right. I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's like trivia night stuff, right? Like, You're well, right. what year did this happen? Who signed that? Or where did, you know, that's not, you know, if you think of the the reporter W questions, who, what, why, you know, really history deals with the why and the how. Why mm. did this happen and how? So I, I told you that I had kind of a, a scary medical thing a few years ago. Well, I had a stroke mm. and part of kind of coming back from that, and I'm totally fine now, but just sort of emotionally and mentally grasping what had happened to me was, okay, well, how did that happen and why? What am I supposed to learn from this, right? And I realized that is the whole point of history. What are we supposed to learn from that? What's the lesson mm. that we can take out of it? And so when you start looking at people that did change the world and, and had an effect 100 years later, like a Lincoln, and, and you start reading those biographies and you start learning how they interacted with their audience, whether it's a country or a company or customers, whatever, you start seeing patterns. And when mm. you start seeing patterns, you can say, oh, can I do that too? So what I developed out of all of that reading uh, was this concept of an authority archetype. And that's five different kinds of uh, thought leaders. So Lincoln would be one. Uh, Thomas Edison or like a Steve Jobs would be an inventor archetype. We have Walt Disney, Hugh Hefner, Napoleon Hill uh, being the visionary publisher where they kind of addressed their following in media through some sort of way, uh, wow. be it writing, movies, you know, what have you. Um, Harry Beecher Stowe, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, would fit in there, too. That's that's a real popular one. You've got one type of thought leader that is uh, 
sort of the super genius and they are always coming up with the ideas and all that. Like a Leonardo da Vinci, who was mm -hmm. both an amazing artist and, uh, and, and an inventor and scientist. And mm -hmm. so that's another kind of archetype. You've got like a, a showman, like a Richard Branson, right? That mm -hmm. kind of, that kind of person. Oh, what about P.T. Barnum? Is he, is he in the mix? Oh, absolutely. He would be a showman, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. The greatest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, nothing like Hugh Jackman, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, didn't he? <laughs> you know what? A, a month ago, uh, fun fact, Matt and I were in the same uh, mastermind for a while and you shared the uh, P.T. Barnum book and I have it. It's one of those books that, you know, sitting on my shelf collecting dust with the intention of reading it. I do because... This is how we learn, right? The, the, the folks that have gone and, and unfortunately, you know, right now it's, it's a lot of men, but hey, ladies, I'm doing a rally cry. Get out there. I need you to be a thought leader so I can consume and read your books too. But, you know, we learn from these, these thought leaders from the past. So, so how do I then, you're talking about an, an archetype. That's something you made up. Can we figure out how we're, you know, what our archetype is? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a quiz on my website at educatedauthority.com. You can awesome. take it's, I don't know, eight questions, something like that. And then you get your result. Uh, you don't even have to opt in and provide your email address to get your result. It's not oh, one wow. of those things, but you can. And if you do, I'll send you more resources based on not only your archetype, but all the archetypes. And here's some books you can go out and get if you want to. Here's how to learn more. Here's how to kind of apply that in your life. Uh, so if, if you want that extra and, and you want a little additional help, okay, like you told me something now, what do I do with it? Yes, uh, yes. That's available for you, but you're not required to, you know, to take that assistance. If, if you just want to take the quiz and move on with your life, um, the, uh, the idea of an archetype actually came from a psychologist, Carl Jung, mm -hmm. and he had this idea that humans, especially in the worlds of stories, uh, they sort of fall into all of these different archetypes. And so that's why we know that in fiction, there are only, you know, so many different types of stories and they all fall into one of those categories. The interesting thing about the archetype is that he had this idea that it was burned into human psychology. Hmm. Like it's cross cultural, it's cross age. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you're from or, or what time period you're living in. These these character types are burned into your brain somehow. And I think that these archetypes, the authority archetypes that I've come up with are kind of the same way. And that's why if you look at like a Lincoln, if you look at a Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Walt Disney, Jesus Christ, all of these people you know, address their audience in a certain way. And, and those strategies will still work today. And they work just as well now as they did 100, 500, 1,000, 2,000 years ago. It doesn't matter because the brain itself hasn't changed. So I've got a cool story about this, by the way, if, yeah. if you want to hear it. I 100%. I'm sitting, by the way, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. I'm like holding on to every single word because we're born with this. Absolutely. Like so wow. here, here's a great example of, of sort of the hard wiring in the human brain. It's one of my favorite stories. It goes back to 2007. These scientists, they studied track and field events. They studied all of these runners. And specifically what they were studying is what's called the victory salute. And that is what you see runners do oftentimes, like at the Olympics or whatever, the first person to break the tape and win the race, you know, the arms go up, the head goes back, you know, they're doing that. I won thing, you know, yeah. eyes are closed. Like, I'm the king of the world. <laughs> exactly. It, that's, that's exactly the, the pose right there. And so they found out that, you know, about three quarters of the runners were doing the victory salute when they won the race. Interesting thing about the study because I haven't told you the interesting thing about Sunday yet. The interesting thing is not one of the runners they studied had ever seen anyone else ever do the victory salute hmm. because every one of those runners was blind since birth. Oh my gosh. So who taught them to do that? Well, nobody. Who did they see do that? Nobody. It just came out of them. Wow. That gives me goosebumps. 
it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's so, really cool. So that's what you've got to do. If you're going to be effective as a thought leader, I'm going to bring this home now, Yep, is you have to understand the hard wiring in the brain and grab onto that and take advantage of it. Like, mm. don't, don't try to paddle against the current. Yeah. Go with the flow. So like, absolutely. Sounds to me like we're we're learning from history. We're learning about archetypes. We're, we're, we're archetypes. Excuse me. We're learning about psychology. That's a that's a those are three pretty pretty big <laughs> pretty pretty big topics. How do we how do we make it easy for our little brains to understand and and put this all together? I'm sure we're making mistakes. Well, yeah, um, you know, all all you need to do is is start spotting the patterns, or you know, unhumbly cough cough. I'll say. Pay attention to someone who has, and they'll tell you. <clears throat> <right>? Matt Gordon. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but that's that's what I'm all about. That's what I yeah. do, and I find it I find it fascinating. Um, I find it exhilarating to be able to help people in that way, and know that through them, I'm accomplishing my hundred year goal as they accomplish theirs. My goodness, that is service 101 right there. I love that so much, Matt. Can you can you tell us a little bit of uh, some of the biggest mistakes that we're making as we're trying to be out there and, and thought leaders? Sure. I'm going to give you two or three. The first one is the types of knowledge. So some of the pushback I get has to do with the fact that, well, why should I bother being the thought leader when everybody looks everything up for free on Google and YouTube anyway? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you're right. <laughs> but there are actually two different kinds of knowledge. And, and once you learn to spot that line, stuff gets a lot easier. So the first kind of knowledge is knowledge on demand. So for example, uh, I wrote about this in, in my Authority Gold newsletter uh, this past month. I was at the car dealership getting an oil change, which is what I was doing this morning. <laughs> and they said, hey, you need a new cabin air filter. It's the air filter that filters the cabin, you know, the, the air that blows into the interior of the car. And they said, and it's only going to be $95. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> so I look it up online like a, like an auto, pop, uh, auto parts store. And that filter's 17 bucks. Mm. Like, come on, dude. Like, it's ridiculous. And uh, so I go to YouTube and I think, okay, it's $17, but can I install it? Because I'm not good yeah, <laughs> at yeah. that. And uh, I find this video on YouTube of this guy saying, here's how you change a cabin air filter and a Jeep Grand Cherokee. You, you go through the glove box, you take the glove box out and you open this little door on the side of the glove box. You slide the old filter out, new filter in, close the door, put your crap back in the glove box, close the glove box and you're done. That'll be ninety five dollars, please. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, this is awesome!" And he didn't even charge me anything to tell me this. So that, well, why didn't he? Well, maybe he uh, just likes to help people. Maybe mm. he likes putting videos on YouTube to be smart and and help people and and all that. Like it's his recreation. Well, you know, good for him. Maybe yeah. he doesn't know, know how to protect a video and charge for it and handle that payment process and all of that and then deal with customer service and refunds and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Well, it, that's, you know, that's an acceptable answer as well. But the real reason that he's not charging for that video is it's knowledge on demand. Like, I don't even remember the guy's name. Mm. I don't really care about him. I mean, I'm thankful. I have gratitude. Yeah, God bless. Thank you. did. <laughs> Yeah. But like we didn't make a connection here, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the knowledge on demand stuff. And that's always going to be cheap and free. And you can't be a thought leader on that. What I'm talking about is more of a body of knowledge mm. um, that people can use to achieve the transformation they're seeking. So it's all about changing people's narrative. Mm. You know, it's it's kind of like give a man a fish, he'll eat today, you know. Teach yep. a man to fish and he'll, he'll eat fish for the rest of his life. And if he uses your method, that's right. the deal, well, right? <laughs> I can teach you how to fish and you will have an abundance of fish and you'll have a return on that investment of your fishing sure. rod if you follow my three part system, right? Well, I mean, that's that's kind of the world that we're entering right yeah. there, honestly. 
Yep. And so that is a big part of it, just knowing the information that people can use to get transformation versus just, oh, here's a fact that you you may need right now, but you don't care about an hour later. Yeah. Right. That's the kind of that's the kind of world we're talking about. So that is a big mistake yeah. is is kind of knowing, you know, well, preventing the mistake is knowing the right and wrong, you know, kinds yeah. of information. Secondly, and I, I said something earlier about, you know, you're not their Google. It's the idea that a lot of people that are trying to become thought leaders, they just want to throw up all this information all over you, you know, <laughs> and, and and they're trying to be smart in public, as, as I call it. And that's not really thought leadership. So if you don't establish an emotional connect, connection, make your audience feel like you care about them. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're going to start caring about you. If you don't get that two way rapport going, um, you're never going to get too far in thought leadership because people just can't care enough. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to uh, this Teddy Roosevelt saying, at least I think he was the first person to, to say it. Uh, people don't, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You know, mm. if you're like me and you hear that, you're like, ugh, gag me. Like, you know, <laughs> what is this? Like, you know, marketing training by Hallmark card, you know? <laughs> and, and it's like all mushy and emotional and oh, isn't that sweet? But the fact is he was right from a neuroscience point of view because we've got these different levels of the brain. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, yep. limbic system, that says, do I care about this or not? Do I feel mm. any emotions? And if people don't, then it it doesn't bother passing it on to the thinking part of the brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, I call that an authority misfire. When people throw information out there thinking that the value they're providing is just in the information. And that's mm. not true. It's much more than that. You've, you've got to build that emotional connection. You've got to hook people into stories. And so... Mm -hmm. With my, you know, up and coming thought leaders, we talk a lot about studying the tools of fiction. Mm. Let's talk about how soap operas are constructed. Let's talk about how comic books are written. You know, what is your origin story? Why do you yeah. do what you do? Well, that's your mission story. Now let's talk about your before and after. How is your life like earlier versus how it's like now? Because people need to see themselves in your before so that they can understand that, that that after that you're advocating for is achievable. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like I've, I've thrown a whole lot out there, so <laughs> I'm just going to stop right there. But that's, that's the sphere that we're, we're playing in. I feel it's like already you've more than, yeah. Then here's how to set up a WordPress blog or go to YouTube and get an account, right? Or yes. post Facebook three times a day. Yes. Yes. Those are, those are, those are all the, the logistic things. Those are the logistic things that you can keep the algorithm happy, but really it comes back to heart and soul and whether you give a damn or not. And if you believe in karma, like I do, you're going to get what you, what you give. So the, so the messages and the care, uh, the message of care that you're, that you're broadcasting um, will be received and you know, how, how fast you want to go about that. That's the logistics behind it. You can put an ad campaign, you can start, you know, promoting different ways, but you, if you first, yeah, you need the care. Um, and, you know, and if you think about like from like Maslow and the hierarchy of needs and the brain and everything, it's like, we all want connection. You have to connect. And the best way to do that is through story. So, you know, Maslow yeah. missed something and do. Uh, he, he missed something that I think is important. And that is the need for people to feel engaged and entertained. Hmm. Uh, that's nowhere on the list of needs. And I'm not saying that they would die without it or psychologically crack up, but we're all seeking that, aren't we? Yeah. We're all looking for something to engage with and be entertained by. And I think that is a vital part of thought leadership. You know, Johnny Carson said, well, if you want to know what America values more, education or entertainment compare my salary to that of the president of Harvard university. Mm. Oh, Carson was doing a little bit better. <laughs> the tad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Right. Make people laugh and you got them. 
entertain a group of people and you got them. All right. So, so let's bring it all home, Matt. So what are we, what would you say to someone who wants to grow the uh, personal brand as a thought leader? Well, what are the, what are our entry level steps that we need? If we're like, yeah, Matt, I'm following you. I'm tracking you. I want to be out there. I want to be known for my story and what I've been through. What do we need to do to get started? Yeah. So I, I have a list of 12 things and I'm not going to go through them all here, but I call them authority assets. And I'm going to give you a couple of those examples. Number one is if you want to be a thought leader, you need your own special language. What is it? What's a word that Heather uses that people can identify with you mm. uh, so that you can kind of live in their head after you're done talking to them for the day that they can, they can kind of tie themselves to in their head. Also, so uh, it, it may be that other followers of yours can identify each other because they both speak the same language, right? Ooh. So if you're in an industry like, you know, uh, well, I mean, you've been in videography and things like that. So when yep. I use the term white balance, chroma key, you know, I mean, I'm going to start rattling off these yep. you know, video production terms. You know, if I say, oh, that was a jump cut, that was a bad edit. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what we're talking about. Most people wouldn't, right? So it's it's the lingo that you've got to invent that that helps people to understand and classify the world around them as well as identify each other to themselves. Um, that's a big one right there. Uh, there are, of course, more. Uh, so let me... <laughs> Let me, let me think about just a, a few that I can real quickly uh, talk about here. We've so, got stuff like, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say on that first point, you know, that's so, that's so interesting. So, um, you know, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Uh, but I would in- encourage everybody out there that if this is lighting you up, please get with Matt because he's going to coach you through all this. But I'm um, even, you know, on that first rule right there is having your own language. You, again, you have to document what are, like, are there key phrases you say all the time, right? That's, does that incorporate your language? Is that how we start to learn what we say and, and what we could, you know, our messaging? Yeah, you've got to be intentional about that and kind of conscious about it. Mm-hmm. That's an important part of it. And, and it's it's often not difficult to do. I call it the authority lexicon, right? Like, mm-hmm. here are my terms. Here are my phrases. Uh, you know, a, another thing that, that I, I talk about a lot is values and attributes. What values do you express in, in terms of kind of what you bring to the table? What attributes do you teach and glorify, right? Let's write those down. Let's get those solid that you're going to represent to people, that you're going to talk about those major themes. I talked a lot about story. Um, There are a few different kinds of stories that we want to write down and then polish until it, you know, shines like a diamond and sparkles. Uh, Your origin story, that's a big deal. Where do you come from? Uh, Mm. if, If you think about like a, I'm not a big at all a comic book fan. I gave up on all the Marvel movies, like at movie <laughs> 82 or whatever it was. You know, all these superheroes now. You stuck with it that long. <laughs> right. Well, uh, but the origin story helps you explain yourself and justify yourself to your audience. If you think of Batman, right? Batman would be a super weird dude. If he didn't have an origin story of the parents were killed and, Mm. you know, all that kind of thing. So now he's sort of like seeking justice because of that. Uh, You look at at Superman, you know, this is an alien that can't be stopped, right? He can see through walls. He can fly. He's got super strength. This alien sounds pretty scary until you get the Superman thing and the origin story and and the mission story, I'm for truth, justice in the American way. And you're like, oh, okay, you're actually a really cool dude. Yeah, <laughs> Superman was interesting. Um, it was basically Jesus with a cape invented by two Jews from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's, this is all news to me. I'm sitting here like just mouth open, like keep going, please. <laughs> this is oh, by the way, he's an alien. When you just said he's an alien, I'm like, no, he's a male. He's a human. But yeah, you're right. My gosh, you're right. Story, origin story. Yes, keep going. So stories are a big deal. Um, 
so we we work a lot with stories. Uh, another thing that we do is something called a relational role, and that is the way people understand how you're going to communicate with them. Mm. So it's another thing I do. I don't have a quiz for it, but I help people kind of pick this out. It can change over time. But just to give you an example, you look at like a Dr. Phil, right? He's the stern but loving parent. Mm. Like he's not all warm and fuzzy and he's not Mr. Rogers, the loving parent. He's the stern parent, right? So that may be one. Uh, Relational role can help um, deal with, uh, oh, what is it? Imposter syndrome. Mm, Okay, so if you feel intimidated by your audience. So think of it. Let's say I go out and I get my my certifications and I'm going to be a financial planner and I'm going to tell you how to invest for your retirement. And you've got this nest egg built up of, say, a half million dollars. Well, you know, if I if I'm just a kid starting out in that world, I don't have a half million. How am I supposed to tell you what to do? Right. Yep. So uh, the the relational role that we use to kind of kill imposter syndrome is that of the uh, the investigator. Mm. So let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, Stephen Covey wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yep. Well, what do you want to be like if you're reading the book? You want to be like the highly effective people. Stephen Covey didn't say, here are my seven habits that I do that you should do because I'm He's like, no, he's he's being more like a journalist or a reporter where yeah. he's saying, look, I studied all these people. Um, here are the traits I found that you can you yeah. can emulate. Uh, that, that has gotten him to his six. You know, he, these are the seven things that he's worked, he's studied, he's used. And now he's just he's just putting that out there for you to consume. Like he's he's done the hard work, guys. Just read this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So that's uh, that's a great relational role. And again, I mean, how do you communicate with your audience? So there are different kinds of styles that you can adopt uh, that help you build that connection faster, better, yeah, and help you uh, know how you're going to explain things to people, how yeah. you're going to address people. Yeah. I love that. You, you, you have your system, you know, you have your, the 12 things that we need to do um, to grow your personal brand as a thought leader. You have the mis- mistakes outlined. You can show us what, what uh, you know, what architect archetype we are through history. There's so much um, just, just so much brain power behind this. And it's so, so well thought out. Like, I'm already sitting here like, when do we sign up, Matt? Because I feel, you know, I do. But here's here's the, here's here's the practical talk here, kids. You know, I have this podcast. Now, what do we do with it? You know, social media wise, I know how to pull all the levers and make it, you know, to get that audience and do those things. But, you know, to provide that value, to make sure the messaging is dialed in, um, it just gets you it just gets you to your goals a whole lot quicker when you get the help you know, from somebody, from an expert like yourself. And so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So anybody, anybody out there, you know, looking to become that thought leader, you definitely need to go to educatedauthority.com, get with Matt, find him on LinkedIn. And by the way, your newsletter, uh, the Authority Gold monthly newsletter, free while subscriptions last, (laughs) but free now, get on there now. It is literally pure gold. Your second issue um, about reading and 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 the fundamentals of reading and how you get inspired by reading. I mean, that newsletter is so good. Can you talk about your new newsletter really quickly? Sure. Authority Gold is one of the ways that I build that episodic communication with my audience. It is free for now. It's not going to be forever. Yeah. I don't know when I'm going to make the switch, but I'm eventually going to make it a physical printed newsletter you get in the mail. So cool. And when I do that, you know, I'll have more costs involved and and I'm going to have to charge for it. But in the meantime, I'm sending out these preview issues. Uh, just completed episode two, working on on issue number three right now. And it's, you know, three, four, five articles every month that address the needs of thought leaders. And, and they help you um, get where you want to go. Yeah, it's so really I'm inspired. excited about it. I'm enjoying it. 
Um, the feedback has been great. We're kind of tuning it as we go and dialing it in. Um, so it's it's a lot about attitude. It's a lot about values. It's a lot about here's what you do and why you do it. Uh, all of that kind of necessarily has to go into it, and I, I really hope that uh, I really hope that it it's going to be useful to a lot of people. Yeah, well, I can I can speak for myself that you know if you if you're 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 looking for a source of inspiration and 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 like you said the why and the how you answer it in your newsletter. I, this past issue, I was lit up. I don't know. There's something about it that just got me going, Matt. It was so good. Oh, cool. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Matt, listen, you, you you came, you saw, you conquered. You helped us understand who a thought leader is. Um, you, you gave us, uh, you know, influencers of the past that we can go and research. You gave us a ton of value about what we need to do to become a thought leader and the mistakes that we should, you know, try not to make. And so, um, I just want to thank you so very much. This this was amazing. I, I have I have on my little note sheet here. I'm just scribbling all over the place, and I I literally can't wait to to listen to this again because of all the value that you brought to us. Is there anything that we missed? I would say that the main theme of what I'm trying to get across to people is, um, it's possible, and you don't have to uh, shoot in the dark. Thought leadership is very attainable, you know, moving uh, large audiences and getting them to do what you tell them to do is, is very possible. It's been done before many times in many ways. And all you've got to do is to replicate those, those efforts, the efforts that, that fit into you and your personality, what you do. You don't have to be someone else. You don't have to change everything about you and your business um, in, in order to make this happen. But uh, this mass control of an audience, I think, is a real big deal because they are the asset in your business uh, in so many ways. If you are a consultant, teacher, coach, yeah. that's what it's all about right there. Uh, you find plenty of smart people out there and in plenty of people that are becoming smart but they need to tie in that that element of of mass audience control uh, because without it uh, you're going to be respected you're going to be known but you won't be rewarded mm. and we're we're searching for that reward there's there's a there needs to be a return on on all of this. Otherwise, you know, what are we doing? It's like, you, like the mechanic, it's great to teach somebody how to change their air filter, but how do we monetize that? Because it does take time and effort. So Matt, this was, this was amazing. Um, and also, you know, I, going back to the origin story really quickly before we sign off is once we, once you develop that origin story, I can say from personal experience, it, it, it brings clarity and, and, and all of this gets a whole lot easier. Oh yeah, it matters. It matters, and uh, you know you've got you've got that going for you, and you've also got just your great energy. I love talking to you. Before mm. we started recording, I'm like, you know, it's been a crazy day. I really needed my dose of Heather, and so mm. I'm so glad I got it. It it was uh, it was a great day to get to do this, even though I'm kind of dragging and, and not feeling so well, and even mm. though <laughs> you know the appointment at the mechanic took two hours and running late and all that. It's so great to catch up with you and, and just to 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 feel that positive energy just radiating off you like oh. it, it always does. So oh man. Uh, well thank you, Matt. Me. You're making me blush. I appreciate that. It's 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 an honor, like I said, one of my most favorite humans on the earth, Matt Gordon, Authority Muse at the Educated Authority. Make sure to check him out on LinkedIn, uh, educatedauthority.com. Uh, get with him if you want to be a thought leader, folks. Get with him. He's gonna make it fun. He's got, you know, the brain, he's got his system down and he's going to get you there a whole lot quicker. So Matt, thank you so very much for spending some time with me today. My pleasure. Thank you, Heather. I'm Heather Holloway and you've been listening to Practical Talk. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me and my team. Hey, remember, check the show notes for resources and links to other episodes. And don't forget, new episodes are released every Wednesday. Wednesday.